Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to an unboxing and installation video of the Corsair H100i. Now, the only reason I'm actually doing this video was because of the fact that the Corsair H100i just came out. I was originally planning to get the Corsair H100, um, <clears throat> but I wasn't going to do an unboxing or review video because there is a, there's been hundreds out there anyway. So, this came out. I saw, um, I saw Tiny Tom Logan's video and the special tech deal. I actually bought that deal. I'm going to get the fans over here. Actually bought that bundle and I've actually opened the fans, but I'll do it, do something about them later. <clears throat> so here it is, the Corsair H100i. And on the front here, as you can see, we can see the new pump uh, style and the new uh, the new SP blade design. Uh, on the side here, we have lots of information <clears throat> telling you what this basically does. Take your CPU to a new level. Hydro Series H100i is simply the best performing all-in-one liquid CPU cooler you can buy. Well, that's true, I don't know. Um, down here we have some specs, I'm actually going to zoom you into that, because they must be worth reading. Um, there you go. You can see that the Intel uh, stock cooler apparently goes off the scale in terms of decibels, uh, and the Hydro Series H100i um, stays at 47.94 um, decibels. I believe that decibels, no, that, that's actually degrees okay sweet um the noise uh, at 100 load the uh, h100i actually goes um actually stays at 37.68 decibels uh and the original h100 uh was about 39 so about one and a half decibel improvement whether you're going to see that much i literally don't know and you can see all the socket types it supports here and processes that it supports there so enough of the box i never really um on unboxing, I never really liked it when they fussed about with the box way too much. So I'm just gonna get my knife here. Knife, lol. It's a uh, press scissors, but still. Oh shit! I actually missed. I've never done that before. Cut across there. Cut across here. And then literally just whip off all the plastic. Now, I actually paid for. Um, <clears throat> super safe delivery on this, um, brand new from Special Tech. I actually played for Super Safe delivery, and it still came within two days. So I ordered it on uh, what was it Wednesday? Yeah, I ordered it on Wednesday. It came Friday, which is today. So okay, so we've got to the inside of the box. At the top here, we have a uh, Corsair Solution to Guide 2010. And so we have the Corsair Obsidian on the front there. Um, a couple of other of their their heatsink things. I'm not going to zoom in because it's. Pretty pointless. Warranty against defects, which means basically you've got a warranty, send it back to them, which is this, send it back to them, don't send it back to special tech. Um, you get the Corsair H100i um, Extreme Performance Cooler uh, User Guide, and you see all of the mounting mechanism, how to install it and such. <coughs> Next up we take off this piece of styrofoam stuff, which is completely fucking with my uh, computer's exposure. I'll leave the cooler till last. Here we have the Corsair link cable here, and um, and the fan connectors for the uh, for the actual unit. Here we have the mounting brackets. I'll just take these out here, taking the piss to take out. Come on, what are you stuck on? There you go. So here we have the Intel um, bracket. These are actually magnetic, so it actually. Uh, magnet uh, magnetizes to the um, to the pump plate thing. This is the AMD one. You see the two screws there, and this is the back plate for I think either, uh, or it might just be Intel. But they are movable, so you can actually use it on a wide range of uh, different socket types. Uh, in this little compartment down here, we have a bunch of screws for mounting. I'm sorry, that keeps it way too close. Um, here we have one of the two um, Corsair SP, I think A fans or SPP or something like that fans without the red ring, uh, without the coloured rings, uh, and these are actually quite a lot. I'd say better because they um, you can adjust them way higher RPM and way slower RPM, but they are louder at the box. And here is the Corsair H100i. So. Actually get this out of the box. Okay, so here is literally everything that comes in the box, bar uh, all of the paperwork stuff that doesn't really matter to us. Um, so we'll start over at the macro. Uh, start off, I mean, at the the mounting brackets. We have the inside one for 775, 1366, 2011, 1156, 1155. All that. We have the AMD one, which doesn't re require this back plate, 
um, or socket is the Intel stuff, this is the AMD one. With all the bag of screws, the two SP120 something fans, uh, the ones that aren't uh, actually the SP120s. We have the Corsa Link cable here, which is basically just a um, mini USB or USB B to, um, to internal USB header. Two um, little four pin, four four pin fan connectors, which plugs into the Corsa H100i um, thing, and uh, the little block thing here and here is the actual radiator itself I just smacked it so got a little bit of damage there but it doesn't really matter I'll see what I'm going to do about that see if it actually impacts performance whatsoever but I don't think it will now connected to the pump here we actually get this time we get a SATA connector so much you can zoom in here so you can see it we actually get a, uh, a SATA connector this time instead of um, instead of Molex so uh, the amount of times people have had to plug in a Molex separately um, just for their H100 this time it's SATA so you've always really got one um, to spare and a three pin just so your CPU um, so your CPU warning doesn't go sick because it thinks that there's no um, cooler on it. So we've seen all this. I'm now going to show you how to mount it in a half X um, and give you a couple of uh, performance um, sort of numbers. Okay, so this process of installing the H100i is actually very difficult to show on camera. So. Um, Basically, uh, in the screw packet, you're going to get these long, long ass screws uh, here, and these are going to go through the fan, which will be up to there, and then screw to the radiator to keep it, uh, keep it in the case. Now, I'm using a half X case. Uh, I'm actually only going to be using one set of fans uh, for now, and I'm going to be using my SP120 Quiet Edition fans, which are here, which got in my TTL bundle. I'll leave a link in the description to that, by the way. So you're just going to thread it through the fan here, as you can see, chilling through the fan. And then I'm just going to put it through the holes here. I'm actually going to have this pushing air through. So it's going to be a, a push um, solution. Pop it through there, line it up, and I'm going to hand screw it in a bit. And we're then going to find uh, another screw. Just hold that there. Find another one. Thread it through. Okay, so I've got to go handheld here to show you the finished article. So as you can see here, we have the two SP120 fans there. I might actually be able to wedge the radiator on this side as well and have another set, but I think I can actually. It's quite a lot clearer, so <clears throat> I will try that in a minute. Um, but right here, as you can see, we have the uh, the fans, and they're bolted straight through. So I can just focus in there. They're bolted straight through um, to the rad, uh, and it goes through two metal uh, bars here. I can't really show you, but... They sit down there and that's what actually holds it to the H100i and there it is there on the back side. Now I don't know if oh fucking I knew that had happened. I've just literally that's been pissing me off all day. But yeah, um I could probably wedge I don't know whether I can get another set of fans on this, on the back here. Probably not. Uh, I'm not gonna try, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to see whether I'll go push pull. But <clears throat> there you go, there is that done. Now let's get on to the, the block mount. Okay, so I'm going to apologise for the graininess, <coughs> graininess right now. Um, I'd have the best lighting setup in the world, just one massive halogen light. Uh, and this is facing away from it. So, And this is completely black. I got it on ISO 3200, so there's not much I can do after that. So you're going to want to get your backplate. Um, if you're on Intel, <coughs> then it's this backplate here. If you're on AMD, then you don't need a backplate. Uh, this little AMD mount here. Um, but you're going to want to get your backplate here. You're going to want to adjust these little prongs to um, all these little sticky out things to your socket type so 1366 is right at the end and um, yeah, 1150 something is um, is right the smallest it can go so <clears throat> we're gonna actually put this behind my half x here now I don't know whether it's actually gonna fit because if it doesn't it's gonna be a major pain in the ass I'm gonna have to take out my motherboard okay so <clears throat> I've done the back plate I actually had to take out my whole motherboard put it whole back in again oh it took the piss but uh, I finally done it uh, and as you can see there, I have actually put in one of the four mounting uh, screws. So I'm going to back in the other one here. And it basically just put it in, finger tighten it. It basically feels just like how it sounds. So. Oh, 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 oh. Now I actually have to lift up my computer a little bit here. So I can, just so I can get the other two slots and line them up. There you go, there they are. So I can just grab another one here. Just hold it up. It's about the noises, that's just my bloody cable management stuff at the back. So I'm just gonna. You can't see anything, I, I understand, but. 
very difficult to do whilst holding a computer case that weighs more than I do. And basically you've got to make sure it's basically finger tight because you're going to want the back plate to be pretty secure but it's always going to be a little bit wobbly. We now have the block and the little Intel mounting thing. Now this is magnetic, um, as I've said before, so basically just is going to sit on top of the thing uh, like this, and that's obviously going to go underneath it. So, uh, just find the way it fits comfortably. So it's going to go on like this, uh, and we're going to find this little mounting thing. Take off this piece of plastic first and foremost. Put this little uh, magnetizer thingy majingy. That will just snap on, hopefully. There you go. Um, I'm trying to untangle these, but it's, it's very difficult. I'm just going to have to deal with it. And I right. put that, put them over the thing, over the little prongs. Hold that down and get these t these tiny little bolt things here. Try not to move it around too much like I just did. So you're going to do one at a time. I'm just going to make this so it's not tight. It's just holding it down a little bit. So on this side, I'm going to do the opposite sides. I'm sorry that you can't see much here. I actually dropped the ISO to 200 from 3200. And it looked nice and shiny and metallic y, but now it just looks dark as F. But you're literally just going to put these finger tight, these little nut things. Not nut things, I don't know how to explain them. These things here. Uh, and do the last one here. I wonder if I can adjust it on the fly. There you go, that's better. Just tighten these up. Tighten them up diagonally. Get the screwdriver. Put them off a little bit tighter. I said to dive diagonally, but I completely forgot, so. Alright, there you go. That is now very nicely seated. I don't think it's going to move. I think it's made nice contact. The thermal paste is already uh, on the Corsa H100i, so you don't need to worry about any of that jazz. Um, so now we have to sort out the cable. Okay, so since the last um, the last shot, I've done literally nothing. Just booted up the system. We're in Windows now. So I've opened up Core Temp, uh, which I'll show you here. Uh, I've opened up Core Temp. Let's just go down to uh, uh, ISO 100 and zoom in here. Core temp, we're at about 27 degrees for all the cores, 28 degrees. Uh, the max it's ever been at is 30, 32, 30, and 38, and I've only just opened this up. So it's doing pretty well. Uh, we're, we're underclocked, obviously, because we're not doing anything. But I'm going to leave that running here. Uh, open up Prime95. Um, just stress test. Um, small FFT, four threads, uh, OK. So you can see now, to go for it, Prime95. And the CPU has jumped no higher than 59 degrees uh, on core one. So that is awesome. My computer used to go to about 88 degrees uh, with Prime 95 running on four threads. And this is Prime 95, so this is so artificial. You're never really going to hit this uh, this level of uh, usage. Now this is over, not overclocked, obviously. <clears throat> We're just at 3.8 gigahertz, which is the, um, the boost clock of the 3570K. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go back, overclock, to about 4.2, 4.5 gigahertz, uh, come back and do another test to show you what's up. Okay guys, so I've overclocked my 3570K with the Corsair H100i. The fans are on the quiet setting, just so you know. Um, I've overclocked my 3570K to 4.5 gigahertz. Um, I don't know the voltage, I didn't set it, I just left it to automatic, and the view droop to automatic, and everything's just automatic, so I'm basically just up the multiplier, done. So, as you can see, idle's about the same, uh, 27, 
27, 25 to 27 uh, are the minimum for all the cords, but it's running at about 29 to 32 uh, at the moment. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to zoom out here for you. I'm downloading Cinebench right now, so I can just have a, a look at a couple of um, a couple of differences in speed. The RAM running at 1866 megahertz as well, I believe. Um, but anyway, let's just open up Prime 95 here. Small FFT tests, four threads of it, because it's a four core processor. Okay, and to get straight back over to the temps. Now as you can see, it's quite a big jump in temperatures, uh, but obviously it's a 1.1 gigahertz overclock. So like 4.5 gigahertz, whole 1.1, you know what I mean. So the max has been 83 degrees for anything, which is way under the 105 TGA uh, max temp. So, you know, we're basically safe. It's not very loud uh, at all. It's run on a quiet setting, so if I did whack it up to the performance setting, uh, these temps might go down a little bit. But that 85 degrees there, that is a very reasonable temperature for 4.5 GHz overclock. I'm very happy with that. It's quite a lot of performance increased. Oh, I went to 86 there, which is the maximum now. Um, but I'm very happy with that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want to see anything else about the Corsa H100, I'll probably do a review video about it. Um, I've run a couple of hours of Prime 95, so I'm not going to keep running that. Um, but if you want any other videos about the Corsa H100i, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, I'm just going to pan over now and give you a little shot of it inside the case. Uh, there's the little LED there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If there's anything else you want to see, please leave it in the comments down below. Uh, it would be much appreciated for a couple more video ideas. Um, please hit the like button down below and the subscribe button for future videos. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one.